them and the air is toxic. Acid rain on the window with the cockpit. Em emissions going through the roof, but no one in Parliament stops it. The, the money for the diesel's toxic. Yeah. Corruption's part of the subject. Yeah. It's got these MPs twiddling in thumbs and forgetting they're there for the public. Yeah. And all the Drill Minister is spreading the word about the effects of pollution. But he's not new to tackling social issues. When politicians accused drill artists of glorifying violence in their music, we commissioned Drill Minister to throw their words right back at them by putting some of the violent language used by MPs into one of his own drill tracks. I want to rest as she's chopped up in a bag in the freezer. That's political drilling. Counting cheese, blowing on trees, till my party's winning. She's a dead woman walking, caught up by downing. Get in your knees, bitch, she won't do no talking. His latest release coincides with the launch of a website address, .pollution.org, which gives an air quality rating for any address in London, highlighting when levels exceed legal limits set by the World Health Organization and what action can be taken. Earlier I spoke to a masked drill minister with Humphrey Mills who helped set up the air quality report website. I began by asking drill minister himself what had led him to focus on pollution. Um, I concentrate on all types of social issues. Um, this is one that I believe is, is important for our health. And uh, health is wealth, and that is something that I'm trying to promote um, for my community, for the underclasses all across Britain, and just generally for people to have awareness. I think this is something that goes beyond even the political realm that I'm usually in. And this is something politically that everybody has to get involved in. Humphrey Miles, what you're doing is, is interesting because it actually allows individuals within the London area, at least, to find out just how polluted their particular patch of London is. But in the end, it really is only going to work if it's nationwide. Yeah, I mean, that's the plan to follow nationwide. It's not just their patch of London, it's actually their specific address. Um, and it uh, uses data from King's College London, which is the most accurate data available, which is used by DEFRA, City Hall. Um, and uh, it gives a annual average reading of nitrogen dioxide, which is a known toxin, um, and uh, gives a broad picture of the kind of uh, long-term exposure levels that you would expect to receive at a given address in London. People have been targeting verbally climate change, certainly mm. in mm. debate and raising mm. the issue. But in the end, this isn't actually going to stop it, is it? No, this is not going to stop it. Um... Just like Humphrey is very, very passionate about this, um, when it's been brought to my attention, um, little Ella Kissa Deborah, which was the first victim of um, air pollution and her passing away, it brought it to my attention that the youth and the future is what is at stake right now. The people that's in power or the people that are of, of an older generation, or should we say, they're not going to have to put up with this for too much longer. Why should a four-year-old have to pay the price of what somebody that is maybe 45 or maybe 52 is making wrong decisions right now. I mean, in a sense, you're trying to arm people, mm. both of you, mm. uh, with an awareness as to what's actually happening to them intimately that will drive them to campaign and then eventually work to change yeah, it. That's absolutely right. We're, we're arming people with, with accurate information um, and also giving them the tools to act on how they can change the situation because... Air pollution and, you know, climate change, these are problems that are, you know, not insurmountable. I mean, we can, we can do something about this. Um, air pollution is... Uh, there are a number of different things that could be implemented on every different level, from a personal level, through to local council, through to national government, mm. um, to drive this problem down. But um, it's just not being dealt with. And, and by raising awareness, by making people or giving people the uh, the information to understand the problem is kind of the first stage of addressing the problem and, and dealing with it. Realistically, I mean, this country is not very active on trying to uh, address climate change. Mm. How do you think people will look back at this video in 50 years' time? I think oh, dear, gonna... I wish we'd done more, or it will actually mark a point when people will do more? I think it's very much a mark point where people will do more, but I think we're going to look back on these times in the, with the same kind of amusement and horror that we, we look back on times when teachers smoked in classrooms, for example, and doctors on hospital wards. You know, the, the awareness levels of pollution are, are um, relatively low in terms of what it's doing to us personally and our health and to the climate. Um, and 
it's, it is going to change. We are doing our best to change it. But one of the main problems at the moment is the information environment that we're subjected to is so heavily corporatized and commercialized um, that we're, people are t just told to consume more and think less. And that's what we're trying to do with uh, this campaign is by giving people accurate academic information, we're trying to nudge people in the right direction. And Humphrey, the idea <clears throat> is that you would like estate agents to put a rating per house yeah, on, I mean, on the sales it, literature? Well, in the same way that uh, the EP energy rating system is uh, used and in the same way that crime rates but are... But do you imagine there'd be houses that would be unsaleable? Uh, I don't think anything is be unsaleable. To make it a consideration in the housing market is um, is, is is the idea of the campaign. Well, I think um, you, you were telling me about the environment in which you actually live in Woolwich in London. Yeah, and there'd be a lot of unsaleable man, houses it, around there if you knew the well, crime rating. Well, I think I think Kensington and Chelsea and Westminster are probably worse hit. Worse hit. I mean, you just have to look at the look at the data, and, and the, the worst hit areas of London are the Kensington, region. Chelsea, Westminster, Hammersmith and Fulham, the central boroughs. Uh, where you know house prices are the highest, actually. Which so uh... mm. you have to you have to see it like this: the pe the polluted areas, yeah, that he just said. Um, there's a Costa Coffee there. There's a Sainsbury's there. There's a Asda's. There's all the same things that are in all the poor areas. Who's working in these places throughout the whole day when they're polluted? Who's who's taking in on their lunch breaks all of this polluted oxygen? It's the people from my areas that are working there all day. The people that own those houses, they're out throughout the day. When it gets to nighttime and the pollution le level lowers, those people go in their house. That's when it's all cut, cut fine to live in Chelsea and Kensington. But in the day, it's me working there. It's my, 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 my neighbor that lives next to me working there. So man has to address this now because man's getting affected by this thing.